Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's gonna be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out. Today will be another video in our Central Venous Pressure series specifically talking about Canon A waves on the CVP tracing. So with no further ado, um, we just wanted to again direct you to our Patreon page if you have an interest. We put all the uh, video outlines and notes on here and we have the CVP Canon A waves. Uh, so if you join and have an interest, you're welcome to download that and follow along with us. All right, CVP Canon A waves. Central venous pressure is something we've talked about in, let's see, two previous videos. Those videos are linked in this video's description. The first is just an introduction to the measurement of CVP. The second is an introduction to the wave form. Um, we'd recommend watching those two videos if you don't have a uh, kind of comprehensive view and understanding of CVP waveforms because this video will be hard to interpret without having at least some basic knowledge of a normal CVP waveform, which we talked about in those videos. Quick intro in that regard, uh, central venous pressure is often looked at as a surrogate for right atrial pressure um, or the filling pressure of the right side of the heart, things we dove into in those previous videos. It's a pressure that's usually measured at the cavoatrial junction Right, so right around here, this is the right atrium, this is the superior vena cava. You put a central line in, in the internal jugular subclavian vein, the tip sits right at this cavoatrial junction, and you measure the pressure right in this area. Again, things we talked about in those previous videos. As such, you need an internal jugular central line, a subclavian central line, or a pulmonary artery catheter to get these measurements. Again, talked about in those previous videos. A femoral central line, which is a central line in one of the veins of the groin, will not give you accurate pressures. Then when you zero at the phlebostatic axis, talked about in the previous videos, and transduce a waveform, this is what you will often get. This is a normal CVP waveform. And we talked about this in our last video, linked in this video description, uh, the five different components of a normal CVP waveform. And these five components are based on the pressure that that catheter right at that cavoatrial junction will see during the cardiac cycle. And it starts with atrial contraction. That's this A wave, the right atrium contracts. So when it contracts, if we think about the heart, the right atrium contracting in is going to increase the pressure in the right atrium and increase the pressure that that catheter is seeing. Then the right atrium starts to relax and the right ventricle contracts. When the right ventricle contracts, it's going to push that tricuspid valve upwards. That tricuspid valve is going to bulge into the right atrium. And that's this C wave here is that tricuspid valve bulging into the right atrium. But the right atrium continues to relax. Um, and that's the X descent, right atrium relaxation. Once that right, right atrium is totally relaxed, the V wave is when the blood starts to refill the right atrium. All right, the blood fills the right atrium, then it starts to empty into the right, atri right ventricle, and then you get right atrial contraction again. All right, and that gives you your ACXVY wave, and that's um, what we talked about in those previous videos. So definitely check those out if that is not familiar to you. But today we wanna to talk about Canon A waves. So this is something you might see if you're looking at the monitor, the CVP tracing of a patient. And it can help you if you recognize this in identifying pathology going on, right? Because these Canon A waves are pathologic. They call them Canon A waves because they're these humongous waves that you'll see on the CVP tracing. For instance, this is the normal single kind of heartbeat CVP tracing. And the A wave is usually the highest, right? This is right atria contraction. But these Canon A waves go much, much higher. These are all Canon A waves right here. And you can see there's these huge cannons of waves that launch up. So what might cause that? If you think about what that means, that is an A wave. So that's right atrium contraction. But what would cause it to go so high? Well, that means the right atrial pressure has gone sky high when the right atrium is trying to contract. And what could cause that is if the right atrium is contracting against a closed tricuspid valve. 
right? If we draw what is going to be not as good of a drawing of the heart, we have the right atrium here, we have the right ventricle down here, and the right atrium empties through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. But if this tricuspid valve never opens and the right atrium contracts and causes a huge increase in right atrial pressure without that valve opening, that will cause this cannon A wave. So it's when the atria contracts against a closed tricuspid valve causing significant backflow leading to the central venous catheter that's sitting right at that cavoatrial junction, right, in the superior vena cava, it causes that catheter measuring the pressure right here to see this huge increase in pressure. Well, what could cause that? Because that's kind of funky, right? When the right atrium contracts, the tricuspid valve should open. That's how it works. Well, what can cause that is when there's disassociation. When the right ventricle is trying to contract at the same time as the right atrium, because that's going to increase the pressure in the right ventricle even more, because the right ventricle is stronger. And if the pressure is increased even more in the right ventricle and the right atria contracts, the tricuspid valve will stay closed. It won't open because the pressure over here is higher than the pressure here. So if you had AV disassociation, that means that the um, atria and ventricles are no longer communicating with one another. That means there's some type of heart block or abnormal arrhythmia going on because usually what should happen is you have a SA node, sinoatrial node here, you have an AV node here, and what typically happens is the SA node sends conduction through the atrium, which then causes the atrium to contract. That pumps blood into the ventricle as this conduction goes through the AV node into the bundle of His, the Purkinje fibers, and that causes then the ventricle contract. So it usually is atrium contracts, then ventricle contracts. But if you have AV disassociation, there's no communication here. Something's gone awry. And the atrium and ventricles are just contracting at random times. And sometimes the atrium will contract first, right? So you have the, atri the right atrium contracts against a closed tricuspid valve. It does it again. It contracts again against a closed tricuspid valve. And then all of a sudden, it contracts coincidentally at a time where the tricuspid valve opens and you get a normal CVP waveform. But then again, next time it contracts against a closed tricuspid valve, and then it works okay. So this is AV dissociation, the atrium and ventricle just contracting at random times. And that can be th from things like complete heart block. It can be from ventricular tachycardia when your ventricle is just contracting in this abnormal heart rhythm and the atrium is just contracting. And again, sometimes that blood might pump through, but sometimes that atrium will pump against a closed tricuspid valve. And if you have a pacemaker and it's not functioning, that can be a cause as well. The key here is that Canon A waves are distinctly different from giant A waves, which we might put in a future video, because giant A waves are when that atrium contracts. Well, just we're gonna draw it again. The ventricles are small here, apologies. So this is the right atrium, the right ventricle, tricuspid valve. Giant A waves are when the atrium contracts and the tricuspid valve does open, but you still get these giant waves because there might be stenosis of the tricuspid valve, so it's harder to pump blood through, which then increases the pressure that that central venous catheter sees, or it might be because the RV has decreased compliance, so it can't expand as easily. And those are called giant A waves, which are different than canon A waves. Canon A waves or when the right atrium is pumping against a closed tricuspid valve, not just the stenotic tricuspid valve. All right, hopefully that was helpful. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. We appreciate you checking out the video. Subscribe, hit the bell button, check out our other CVP videos. There will be more to come. Uh, we appreciate you all. Stay well, keep learning. We'll see you next time.